try. It's mm. punch count. Now pull it down. Mm. All right. Now from there, I want to show the break. Boom! You got your kidney strikes. Okay. You see where the elbow's coming in? The idea behind this elbow is in the form. It's right here. And you see how the elbow's working? So if I'm at a breaking situation, boom, strike that, then all of a sudden he throws his other punch. That's the circular motion. Bang, bang, bang. <laughs> Those hurt, don't they? Now I'm palm striking him too. Uh, but the point is, this arm is not useless because I'm hyperextended it, broke it, dislocated it, anything along those lines is very effective. But then he throws this next punch, it would not make sense for me to step back and throw a hard ball. It just wouldn't make sense. I mean, you could, but then he would be away from me, but it does make sense to be able to come in and throw a soft block. Mm. You know? Now I go into different things, but so you want to do a combination of things, and that's what I like about the Tiger. He's throwing a punch, I go, Whoa! he can pull his hand back. I have no, <laughs> pull your hand back. I have no control over it. However, in the Tiger style, he's not going to pull his hand back. If he does, I'm coming with it. You know, and the idea behind that is, in grab arts, if I grab somebody and they start pulling away from me, well, you know, it's on to whoever's stronger or stronger, but I still have him. But in reality, if I grab to him and he walks in and puts his elbow on my chest, that's probably a bad thing for me. What am I going to stop it with? I just grabbed him with both hands, you know. I'm going to basically get hurt real quick. So, getting in principle, if somebody grabs me, I don't try to pull away from him. I'll walk into him, you know, and, and do what I have to do. But <clears throat> Same thing in the combat of the uh, tiger, for instance. Tiger kind of, mm, mm. I'm actually doing a lot of grab arts here. You know, and if either he's going to throw a punch, I've got a grab I can do something with. Or if he doesn't throw a punch, then I'll just grab him. And now he's in serious trouble. I'll take his shoulder right out of joint and I'll try to throw him. Mm. But certain animals do certain things. Crane style. You know, bam, he throws the punch. Bam, bam. Scoop the fish from the sea. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of styles. Uh, dragon, he throws the punch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dragon extinguishes his fire, fire being the heart element. So let me just go ahead and put the fire out. Dragon, leopard. Leopard is a uh, liver element. So you're doing a lot of work on the left. Leopard works on the river. Uh, snake. Snake is the stomach earth element. So snake is working on those sort of things. So you're learning how to build your stomach up. Snake being an earth element. Snake crawls on his stomach. So as you're doing the snake element, you're building your stomach up. Okay? That's the whole ideal. But at the same time, you're destroying your opponent's uh, stomach. Same thing with the tiger. Tiger being fire element, so you're going, <sighs> and you're building up your heart. But at the same time, you're destroying your opponent's heart. And so, it was created by a doctor several thousand years ago. This is not something I come up with, obviously. <laughs> but it makes sense, you know. And so the reason why I like to combine the Tai Chi and the, you know, the Shin Yi and all the different things and the Bagua and the Five Elements and the Kaji Kimbo and all that together and the Kali and everything is because they should work together. Once again, you don't box against a boxer, you don't kick against a kicker because they're probably going to be better at it than you are when you're an old man like me. So when you come to play, you got to come to play with everything you have. You just don't know. So anyway, getting back to the tiger style. The idea behind the tiger style is they actually steal your energy by taking your balance, okay? So if he's throwing his punch, and I'm coming in, 
these are very powerful breaks right here. <clears throat> you know? And so that's Tiger Sky. We do a lot of grab arts. Uh, cannon boxing. There's not really a whole lot of grab arts here. It's just <clears throat> going through you. Now I'm taking his legs out too, by the way. I didn't mean to break their ankle. <laughs> But that's cannon boxing, meteor fist. You know, it's bang, bang. These are just coming falling out of the sky like a meteor. Now, granted, he's going to be able to stop a lot of them, but he ain't going to be able to stop all of them. So, it's uh, nothing fancy. It's just meteor fist. Uh, some gung fu stylists refer to it as splashing fist, like splashing in water. You know, the tiger splashing prong. Point is, this right here will eventually work. I'll give you my ideal now. I'm coming slow now. So here we come. One, two, three, four. But see, I'm closing the distance and I'm keeping, <laughs> see, I'm, I'm getting some hits in there. Uh, so it doesn't take a lot of these kind of hits to make a difference. Now, just for anybody that might be watching this, I'll show you a fist that. Uh, works pretty well. Okay, you make a regular fist, pound your palm, okay? Then you roll these three fingers in, you put that finger over, just like that, and now pound your palm. It's like a hammer. It only has one function, do this. You try to do anything else with it, you'll break your hand. But it's just one way of making a meteor fist, you know, and you can feel, physically feel the difference. Regular fist, your fist. You can, you can even hear the difference. I'll try to try to set it where you can hear it, okay? Regular fist, meteor fist. You can hear the density. Feel that? <laughs> it's solid. And so, once again, it's not a real good thing for punching with or blocking with or anything else. But if you're going to strike somebody, uh, give me an, uh, an example. Okay, you know, come on over here, big boy. Okay, here we are. <laughs> right, right there, just what I was going to do. Sorry, Nelson. <laughs> I didn't mean to throw you. Well, I did, but I didn't mean to throw you without hitting you first. But the idea was, I was going to come in and split his sternum with that meteor fist right here. Mm. Another way, another method, uh, simpler, would be... Uh, Right here, top of the head, soft. So you're using hard against soft. And that's a really good place to smack somebody right there. If you want to hurt them, hurt them bad, that's a good place. Another place to hit them is right here at the base of the skull at the brain stem. You gotta be very careful of these strikes. These, these strikes are not nice strikes. You might hurt a little bit if you hit them in the brain stem with one of those. Uh, so, that's using hard against soft back into that thing. Now we want to use distance. He's coming in to hit me. I may want to see I can't reach him with my hands. I can certainly reach him with my legs. Okay. So there are times that you combine things. For instance, he's coming in going, boom, I just raked him in the eyes, kicked him in the groin, come around, now I'm gonna hit him in the soft part of the throat. Or let's just say that he stops my knee. Bang, okay? I'm coming in and he stops my knee, so I may want to use some chin on it. Now all of a sudden I've got an arm break right here. When I brought him down, I'm striking him, and let's say he stops my chop. Okay, so now I'm just going to crush his ribs and his liver for him and take his air. You know, so there are times. But you want to do groundwork stuff, but it's not something a fat old man like me needs to be doing all the time. You know, if I'm on the ground, of course I've got techniques. But I do my best work here. You know, so this is where I kind of want to stay, if possible. Uh, anyway, just a little more chat on application.